Hey folks, Markus here from Skamashi TV. Thank you so much for tuning in for this video today. Yeah, and as you can see, after a longer time, we are again in the car. And why are we in the car? Because we review a dash cam. This one here. Uh, it is called the Ding Ding Pi Mini 3. And the very, very good thing is they actually sent me two pieces to give away. So there will be follow up, follow up videos to that. And we will run a competition again and we will give away two of these cameras. We unbox here one of them and I tested another one already now for sure two weeks. And so far, yeah, I cannot complain, but more to that or more on that uh, later in the video. One thing I have to point out, I got this sent for free. But of course, as usual, also with my other dashcam reviews, I will point out what I don't like about the camera. Uh, regardless if I get a camera sent for free or not, I will always tell if it's something find annoying or something is not uh, to my liking. Before we unbox it, going quickly over uh, some features of it. It has a, a, a 145 degree wide angle. It has a built-in storage, so you don't need an SD card, which has the advantage, of course, that you uh, don't need an SD card. You don't need to buy a mini SD card. It has the disadvantage that you fix to that storage but it is a dash cam, so the only really function it should do is recording videos while you're driving and keep you keep you uh, a video in case you have an accident or someone bangs you uh, in the car. And for that, the storage is way than enough. But without further ado, let's go into the unboxing. We see here a really nice black box. Uh, it's called Mini 3 here on top. Uh, really uh, neat unboxing experience, so let's open that. And there we go. We get greeted by this thing here, this little sheet. See the world, share the world. It's written here DD Pi, but the camera says Ding Ding Pi. So I assume the correct uh, name spoken out is Ding Ding Pi. I hope I don't butcher the company's name. After all, they sent me that to give it to you guys. And what we have inside here. Just a little uh, quick start guide. So that's every, all what, what is in here. Uh, the quick start guide is written in English. Not much in there, just how to install it quickly that you need to download the application. And that's pretty much it. All right, so what else we have in there? We have here the camera, we look at it later. Uh, we have here, and that's actually pretty amazing. We have a very long cable here, USB cable to connect to the camera and it is very long so it is long enough that you can feed it in the car if you want to mount it fix that you can feed it in the car underneath the the covers here and they also provide you a tool here this one and with this little tool you can actually let's put it out you can use this tool here and then you can uh, in the covers you can actually pull them a bit away and then uh, just hide the cable underneath. But yeah, they not only give you this cable here, which is the long one, what you need for the car, they also provide you a small cable, an OTG cable, so you can actually update the firmware, can connect the camera as a device and um, use it as a device and can uh, copy the videos and the, the uh, photos you made with it, so that's pretty handy. And I have to say, even not uh, my next best camera, which is way expensive than this one. We're talking here, uh, I don't know the price yet because it's not yet on the Amazon store. When I release the video, it will be already on the Amazon store. So I will update the prices, but it should be around 100 bucks. My next best camera was the double the price and they did not include a second cable. So uh, that's definitely a big thumbs up for me. So what else we have here? We have here some stick pads, uh, 3M pads which you can use to mount the camera because there are various ways you can actually mount the camera and they give you here some spare. One is already on here. Then what we have here is the cigarette lighter so you can actually connect the USB and again like very various other good companies does it, they provide you a cigarette lighter with two USB ports so in case you want to connect your camera, you still can charge your 
your phone, tablet, whatever you like. So what else we have? We have the mount, which is this one. It looks quite unusual for a camera mount, for a dash cam mount. And I actually will show you, here is the USB where you connect the USB. I actually will show you later why it's the case, so we put it aside for now. And there's one thing which uh, stands out right away. And that's actually this little thing here. So you might ask, what is that? What the hell do you do with that? Well, you have a round stick tape, uh, 3M tape provided by the company, so by Didi Pi or Ding Ding Pi. And you can actually stick that here somewhere you want it to or down here and once you press the button it shoots a photo so in case you have something emergency or something else you just hit the button and it shoots a photo so that's pretty cool and there are also uh, settings for it that you can use the remote button and you can pair the remote button so theoretically you could if you lose it you could pair another remote button so i definitely think this is a great idea and i have not seen yet a dash cam who actually has that yeah and last but not least we have the star of the show, which is the camera. And you see here, it is a very sleek design. It is kind of a metal, it is plastic, but it is a metal feel, uh, rubbery, slightly, slightly, it feels, it feels just great. Touching the camera, when I, when I touch my next space, which is, which is uh, uh, up here actually, you can see that the, cur at the current camera angle. The next space is definitely a great camera, but it feels completely cheap plastic. So the feel of the camera is, is cheap and much cheaper. The feel of this camera, of this material is outstanding. None of the dash cams I tested so far had such a high quality feel to it. What else we have here? Yeah, we have here the lens, we have here the microphone, we have here the reset function, we have here also the microphone, that's the speaker by the way, sorry. Here's the microphone. And we have then here the connector. You see here a USB connector and you see here a small pin connector. And when you look into here, you also see here a small pin connector. So the USB connector you use if you bring the camera inside and if you connect it to your computer, then you use this USB. If you, but if you mount it and uh, the camera usually, here's a 3M tape, you mount it to the windshield and then the only thing you do is when you want to use the camera, you just take the camera and slide it in and you're good to go. You can turn it so you can adjust the angle how you like it because not every windshield is the same. And depending how you have, have it mounted, depending on that, you need to turn the camera. If the camera is mounted and you want to actually see what is going on, you can do so by downloading the app and connecting to it. And it actually has a live feed. So you see really what is going on on the camera one-to-one -one live. We will show you, I will show you that later in the video. And you will see later in the footage that actually not only the camera is cheap it pro and feels high quality, it also provides you high quality uh, videos. We will compare it, we will compare it with my next space, which is pretty much one of the best cameras you can buy here in the room in UK and Europe. It will have a hard time to keep up, but we will see how it goes. Hello, Ding Ding Pi. Yeah, that's exactly how the camera greets you. And once you have it connected to the power, then it starts up with Hello Ding Ding Pi and is pretty much ready to go. So you don't even have to use the app and have to configure anything. There are some options you can configure and you can uh, use it for sharing your car videos, which I'll show you later. We will take a look in depth and inside. But uh, basically, you connect it to the power source. And I, you see here, I have a usual the cigarette lighter with the cable. Uh, it's kind of rough because I only use it for review. And the cable goes up and goes up and goes up. And here you see my uh, usual mounted camera. And here you see the Didi Pi or Ding Ding Pi uh, dash cam. And you see it is really sleek, really small. Uh, way easier to mount than this big one. It has, of course, one disadvantage with that mount and that small form factor, it doesn't have GPS. They do provide a permanent power supply as accessory, which you can buy, uh, which is used to use the, use the parking mode because the camera features a parking mode. So if it's connected permanent to power, then you can set in the app how long the parking mode should actually last. And that's up to 24 hours. 
So depending on your car's battery and it also has a shut off function to not drain your battery fully. To demount it and mount the camera, all you pretty much have to do is you just take it and, and slide it out. And you just, when you want to use it, slide it in. And then click it and that's all. It is, as you can see, camera is instantly back and works instantly. So that goes really, really fast. Also the boot time of the camera from the time you put, um, you connect the camera to the power, it takes roughly five seconds and the camera is here. So it is really, really fast. All right, so I have my phone here. And if you want to use the camera without connecting into the computer and want to actually go into the settings, you need an app, it's called DDPi, available on the Google Play Store. And you also have a, a code which you can scan and just um, then use it. Yeah, and it's now connecting to the camera. It has its own Wi-Fi network. And as you can see here, we see already a live feed. So you see pretty much what the camera sees. And if I put my hand here, my fingers in front, you see that. And of course, if you go in landscape mode, you have pretty much a full screen. So if you have a second camera of this, or if you, for example, um, use the camera on the back, you can pretty much, pretty much use it also as back camera. And I will also now uh, record the same movement what you see here, also with my action camera. So you see actually a bit the difference. And you can compare it, but you see it is pretty accurate. So uh, I have this, I had the same feature with the Nextbase app and the, the Ecam, which I tested recently. And on the very high resolution, it had always a bit trouble to keep up with the live feed here. So the live feed every time was a bit stuck and stuttery until it actually displayed because of the data transferred from the Wi-Fi. With this camera, which has an even higher resolution than the E cam and an even higher resolution than the next base cam, it has 1600p, so that's over, uh, over 2K resolution. It pretty much is flawless. So regardless how much is happening in front, the data stream is always fine. If you have the phone, I would say within five, six meters vicinity. So you even can go outside the car and you still have actually a feed to it. But that's not all, of course, what you can do with the with the app. Uh, you can here shoot the photo, as you can hear. Uh, you can use the button, which I usually have mounted on my, on my dashboard, and use it to make a picture. You probably heard that. And you can, of course, download the picture, download image files, download video files, etc., etc. All right, I also wanted to give you a little overview about the application itself the Ding Ding Pi camera app, which is, in my experience, from the other dash cams I tested and up until now, pretty much the best one. It has quite a lot of features. Uh, you see here the camera screen, which uh, gives you a little file list, and you can also top here on, when you click here on top, then you see, you see myself, because the camera is laying right beside here. We are now inside, not in the car anymore. And you get here the feed, what I showed you before. And you get also here the file list. So when videos are stored and photos are stored, then you can uh, directly access them here. You can, of course, uh, on the road. Here you have kind of like a, a community portal. So you can share user experience. Or you can watch other dashcam videos from other people. So we also have here album. You see here images, for example. Then you see videos. Uh, you have emergency recording, which are none currently because I formatted the camera recently and you can select and then you can select the stuff uh, the, the, the images and um, videos you like to download and then you can either share it you can edit it or you can delete it so that's a pretty pretty neat feature uh, we also have the me and me is the, the most important thing you have your messages you can uh, log in if you want to if you want to socialize with that what we Checking out here, we check out the about section. So you see uh, DDPi app version uh, 5.7 point, yeah, whatever. Uh, new firmware available. It's now accessing the internet. And current version is the latest. Uh, no wonder because I have updated the firmware. So with that app, you can also update the firmware from the camera, which is very handy. And then we have the settings menu. And the settings menu is a very important one, of course. I hope you can see that properly. If not, I also do a screen recording, so you see that here then as well. 
you have your languages, you have your couple of languages available like English, uh, Russian, Portuguese, Espanol, German, Italian, Francais and a uh, couple of Chinese, Korean, Japanese languages which is pretty cool. Then you have the camera settings and then you can access the camera settings. It's connected now you see again to the Wi-Fi from the camera and then here is all things you choose for the camera. So all what you set here is pretty much for the camera. So you have camera name, you can give the camera an own name, I left it on standard. You can set your own camera password in case you want to have a different Wi-Fi password. You can set the camera volume, uh, let's say when we set it to 50%, it gives you uh, a response for it. Okay, yeah, you have microphone recording, you can turn it off in case you want to have the privacy in the car and don't want to have the microphone recorded, which is a pretty neat option. Uh, video with snapshot, this is when you, the button I showed you before, when you make a snapshot or when you make a snapshot on the app, it always records additional a video and you can set how long the video should be, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. This is um, yeah, very useful for emergency things or for in case, you, in case you see a crash or something like this, you just hit the button and uh, it Im instantly makes, makes an image, it takes a, a fraction of a second and it also records a video in the length you choose here and I have here 30 seconds so that's pretty neat. Then you have resolution, 2K plus, 2K or you have 1080p, you cannot go lower. In my opinion lower would be not make sense. You, you need to have as much detail as possible in case of you have an accident so you can zoom in in the image. That's very important, that's why higher resolution cameras are very good and with 1600p so 2K plus this is definitely a great resolution, it gives you, gives you plenty and plenty of stuff to actually zoom in. Then you can set it to 2K of course and to 1080p. Uh, the lower you set the resolution, the more or the longer you can of course record video because the file size is smaller. But I have it rather on full resolution, the camera loops automatically, you don't need to take care about anything. Then we have advanced settings and here you can do some other things, you can do remote control pairing. Uh, this is the little button I showed you before, in case you lose it or in case you, you change it out, you can of course here change the remote control. You have a lens distortion correction, I have it set to on, which I definitely uh, recommend. Startup sound, it's the greeting what you hear. Uh, post parking video mode is time lapse record, in case you want to have that battery protection for parked vehicles. Uh, you can say yeah, 15 minutes, etc, etc. You need for the parking mode an extra accessory which you need to order, so it is permanently connected to the, to the power source. Uh, then you have G-sensors, uh, by the way you can, uh, the parking, you can set to 15 minutes, 1 hour, 6 hour, 24 hour and not, no shutdown. Next up we have the and last point, we have the G-sensor uh, um, sensitivity, you can set it to off, low, middle and high. I have it to low. Uh, roads in Ireland are sometimes very rough, a lot of potholes and things like that. And I mentioned before my next base does a pretty bad job. This one actually does on low or middle a very very good job. So that's definitely a cool thing. And that's pretty much all for the camera settings you have. What else we have? We have camera storage management. So you can here see you can format the disk and you can see the storage management, how it's set to for emergency space and normal space. Yeah. That's the complete overview about the camera application and as I said in my opinion a pretty neat one. Alright, after a week of intensive testing now with the camera and you will see now footage from various conditions and also later on comparison footage with my next base cam which was actually mounted right beneath it so the footage and the angles are pretty much the same. I can say this camera is definitely a big big winner. Not only feels the camera very sturdy, it also acts very sturdy and very good. I had no issues so far in my over one week testing now with the camera and I drive a month over 15,000 miles. So I drive a lot every week and so far absolutely no issues. Video quality always very very good. The function of the camera itself always very very good. I encountered with various other dash cams every now and then that you, that you have to fully reset the camera in order that it works again properly. I haven't encountered this so far with the Ding Ding Pi Mini 3. 
And yeah, I would say we go over the cons and as the pros and cons, and then later on I show you a bit footage, comparison footage with the next space. So what are my biggest pros? First of all, it has a very sleek design. It reminds me on this uh, one camera from the American brand, which is very, very expensive. Double or triple the price, for no reason in my opinion. It has a metal casing, which I said it before, feels really, really good. So I think the design award, which it got, is from not without reason. It has a very high video quality, 1600p is over 2K resolution. And the video quality itself, because 2K is not always 2K, 1080p is not always 1080p. There are huge differences in quality of the video and as you see yourself here, the video quality is definitely outstanding. It has an, an excellent saturation and color level, which is pretty much in my opinion perfect. It has built-in Wi-Fi. It is very easy to use, very convenient to use. It has a very good app with social features. It has a parking mode when you use the hard wiring kit. Unfortunately, I didn't have the hard wiring kit, so I could not uh, collect footage from the, from this. Uh, the video and photo remote button, it's just, it's just cool when you just want to have, you see something on the street, you want to make a snapshot, you just click the button and it's done. It comes very complete with every accessory you need. You have two cables, you have the prying tool, the button, dual USB. It's everything in there what you ever need. And of course it is highly competitive priced. It's currently on Amazon for $139, which is really, really cheap in my opinion when I compare it to other cameras on the same level. Yeah, what are the cons of this camera? Uh, while the camera is pretty much a big favorite for me now, there are some cons. First of all, it has no suction mount. Not everyone wants to stick the camera, even if it is way sleeker to mount, but not everyone wants to do that. So a suction mount would definitely a great idea. Uh, the biggest con for me is it has no GPS. Uh, this is not so much important in many countries, but in some countries in Europe, insurances want you to have when you use dashcam footage as pretty much proof. They also want you to have that it has uh, GPS data in it with speed and all that stuff. Uh, this can be, by the way, very negative if you be too fast, but it is, I have to mention it, it has no GPS currently. Maybe they bring a module because there are many dash cams, they have external GPS modules, so that would be definitely an absolute top idea for this camera. Video and photo footage is a bit over sharpened which you see on the footage here when we compare to the next space. It is great, the quality is great, the colors and saturation is great, but it is a bit too over sharpened. But that is not really something which uh, should the average user bother with. Uh, another con is it has no desktop client. There are cameras out there that provide you a desktop client to review the footage, which is a convenient thing. And my biggest thing is it's not yet available in Europe. So I'm in Europe, of course, my viewership is uh, mainly US and UK. So for all US guys out there, uh, you can order it on Amazon US. Link will be, of course, in the description. For Europe, unfortunately, it's not available yet. But I have heard from DDPi or Ding Ding Pi that they will make it available on Amazon UK very soon. Yeah, fazit for me of this cam is definitely it is a great action cam, especially for that price. My camera and many other cameras, they have similar features, similar functions and similar resolution in terms of the camera. Way, way more expensive. So this camera is definitely a highly recommendation for mine. If you don't need a GPS. If you can live without GPS, this camera is definitely currently, in my opinion, one of the best you can actually buy. Yeah, and that concludes also the video review and in-depth look about the Ding Ding Pi or DD Pi Mini 3 dash cam. It was really a pleasure for me to test it out. And as I said in the start, there will be a follow-up video with a giveaway for this dash cam, so in case you want to have this dash cam, you have a chance to win it there. And I leave you now with the comparison footage from the DDPi Mini 3 and my next base cam. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please consider give it a thumbs up, like and share the video and definitely comment below what you think of it. Yeah, and in case you're not yet subscribed to my channel and you like what you see, highly appreciate it if you subscribe. And if you do so, please click the bell button on the side gets you notified when new videos coming up from me. 
other than that, I hope you have a great day, take care, bye bye and enjoy the rest of the footage. Each of the computers looks